If you've tuned into this podcast in the last couple of months, there's a good chance you've heard me talk about how much has changed in the world of work. With so many businesses going remote, among so many other things that are happening, we're facing a lot of new challenges in the workplace for the very first time. The reality is, no one's got all the answers about what the future of work looks like. But as hiring professionals, we're really all finding our way through this experience together. And our friends over at Indeed get that. That's why they've launched Lead with Indeed, your go-to for all things hiring. So whether you're looking for virtual recruiting strategies, trusted economic forecasts and reports, or maybe just inspiration from leaders in the TA space, including content by yours truly, Lead with Indeed Indeed is full of fresh ideas for you, the people shaping the world of work. Check it out at indeed.com slash lead and sign up to get alerts and access to exclusive content. Again, that's indeed.com slash lead, L-E-A-D. Welcome to the Work Trends Podcast from Talent Culture. I'm your host, Megan Ambiro. Every week I interview interesting people who are reimagining work. And be sure to check out our Work Trends Twitter chat events calendar located at talentculture.com on the podcast page. Welcome, welcome to the Talent Culture Work Trends Podcast. In today's episode, we are discussing a topic I lived with for many years as a recruiter, and I lived with it in a really painful way. We are going to be talking about job candidate experience. This is an evergreen topic and one that remains a work in progress. We talk a lot about this topic here at Talent Culture, and it's important to many people who are members of our community. So as I was researching the data on candidate experience, I came across a survey conducted in 2019 by Brandon Hall. The results showed that over 73% of responding companies care about the candidate experience. Still, less than half think their tactics and practices are effective for creating a great candidate experience. The good news here is that nearly three quarters recognize the candidate experience as something valuable. But the bad news is that many don't know how to create this goodwill with candidates. I'd say this survey is typical of the general business population. And given this disconnect, we still have a lot of work to be done here. And this is why I've invited today's guest to join me. My guest is John Salt, and he's what I would call a job candidate advocate. He's very passionate about this topic and has a lot of sage to share with us. Let's learn more about John right now. John Salt is an operations executive with a successful track record of driving aggressive growth in digital businesses with an extensive background rooted in data-driven problem solving. He's been a strategy consultant working in top-tier firms across multiple sales channels, industries. I mean, you name it, he's been there. He has over 25 years of experience in the recruitment marketplace, both within large matrix organizations and small to medium-sized businesses. He has worked for prestigious organizations like Stepstone.com, Total Jobs Group, Reed Elsevier, Guardian Media Group, and CV Library, to name a few. Well, listen, without further ado, welcome, John. Thank you so much for joining me today on Work Trends. Hey, no problem. Great to be here. Thank you, Megan. This is a topic that I have lived for many years as a recruiter. My company, Talent Culture, has been a sponsor and supporter for years of the organization Talent Board, which recognizes business that get the candidate experience right. So listen, let's get started. I'm eager to dive into this topic with you. Sure, let's do it. So tell us, what is wrong with the candidate experience? Well, there's plenty wrong with the candidate experience. And my my biggest bugbear came down to this. People used to talk about processing, the candidate process. And I think a lot of the experience is still rooted in that process. And I'm a very strong believer that you don't process people. You process fish or you process vegetables or you process chicken because you're just trying to do it quickly and as cheaply as possible, right? I think you need to take your time with the candidate experience because actually it's one of the most fundamentally important things people do is apply for a role where they can exercise their talent, where they can add value to corporations, small businesses, but it's still treated as something which is difficult to do. It's clunky. It's a hassle. It doesn't always work properly. You know, try applying for a job on a mobile phone, on a cell phone, uh, where, you know, the experience between what you're looking at as a 
job ad maybe on an aggregated site that then redirects you through another couple of aggregated sites that captures a registration that you're not quite sure what it's for, that drops you into an ATS where actually they know nothing about you apart from the fact they've just landed on the pages. And there's no reason, you know, there's no reason to think that 96% of those people that start that journey on a mobile don't complete it. So that was some research done by AppCast earlier this year, that 96% of people that start to look and apply for a job on a mobile don't finish it off and make that application. Could you imagine if that was the same in e-commerce or e-retail? Could you imagine what would happen to the people that were in charge of that software and technology? It just wouldn't exist. John, the sad part is I can't imagine because I see it all the time. It's unbelievable. So let's talk about solutions for people now that we've drawn their attention to this thing called candidate experience. What are some tactics industries can learn and use from industries like online retail, logistics, gaming, right? Travel, hospitality that utilize all this cool and smart technology? Well, the first thing I would say is you don't need to utilize all the smart technologies to make your candidate experience better. One of the first questions I'd ask is, does this candidate experience need to be so long? Does it need to be so rigorous? Do we need to have five or six different kind of data sets and entry points just to get started? And also, use the smart technology that enables people to say, I know something about this candidate already. Now, I, I love using sites. Well, I used to love using sites before the pandemic, like Booking.com or Airbnb or something like that because it remembers me. It knows about me. It knows I've made a booking before. It fills in the, the, the information for me. And I have very little to do once I've chosen something to go for. There are plenty of job platforms that know loads of information, loads of data points about a candidate. But do they ever bring that over in a seamless, smart, integrated way? No, they don't. Because the problem is the technologies don't talk to each other. The job board ATS customer technology is a broken link, has been for years. And too many people have been pointing the finger at each other saying, that's a job board problem or it's an ATS. ATS problem or is a candidate pages problem. There's been a lot of finger pointing, but nobody's really embraced it. I take my hat off to companies like JobSync that are trying to do it. In the UK here, there's a smart company called uh, Sonic Jobs. They've done away with actually having to integrate with the ATS. They've got technology that sits above the ATS and powers that candidate data and they take the candidate data across. More is needed in this area. And it's one of these things where you know, it strikes me as really strange that people spend a lot of time talking about their employer value proposition. They'll spend a lot of time talking about having the best ATS, but they'll do very little about the integration between the candidate finding the job in the first place to the candidate actually having to fill in some really long convoluted forms. So I'd start with two things. First, have a look at your process. Is it overly complicated? What does it feel like to a person who is just looking to apply for their next role? And secondly, are you even aware of the smart technologies around that can shorten that process for the candidate and give you a better success of conversion rate? So some of the technologies I mentioned there, you know, you'll, you'll talk about if it's 4% on mobile conversion, which is shockingly low, they can get it into the 24, 30 odd percent, which still isn't high, but at least you're getting a third of everybody that starts the journey completing it instead of one in 25 people, which is shocking. So tell us, John, what are the benefits of brands using data to funnel and sort in a give to get approach? And how can they gain efficiencies by knowing when to use an algorithm and when using a humor rhythm will benefit them? Yeah, well, I think there's great benefits actually from people using data. And I think one of the smartest things I've seen recently is the ability to know that candidate based on what they've already done. I mean, you know, candidates will use, what, five, six different job platforms in their job search. And nobody's got a unique, you know, not in any country, nobody's got a unique stranglehold on the market. So there's plenty of information and data on what they're looking for. And I think, you know, when you when you think about the give to get on that data, so do you really need to ask the questions of name, email address, zip code, job applied for? You probably know that information before by what they've done already. So have technologies that can import that in and then just ask the smart questions, ask the questions that are different. And if you can do that with a give to get, maybe sharing information backwards and forwards between different technologies, it's gonna be more efficient, as I said earlier. But you can do things really smartly. You can do it with great questions. You can use things like chatbot technology. You can even use things like text, voil out, uh, text voicemail outreach. Stuff that makes it quicker, stuff that makes it easier is always going to give you a better benefit. And so I think a mix of using technology and algorithms to understand the data and what, what holes are missing in the pieces you want and then using some kind of humor rhythm outreach as well, where you can say, okay, I would like to ask this person the following questions. But you can do that in things like in-app messaging. You can do that in things like a text message or an SMS message and come back and get, and get an answer pretty quickly. 
The problem is joining all that data up and there are still big holes in HR technology because there's so many legacy platforms that are kind of buckled and banded together that just don't do it in one neat swoop. And I think that's going to be one of the changes we're going to see in the next two or three years. It's getting harder and harder for companies, even in today's world, to have that outreach that says, I know where to find the best talent. And, you know, I know how to reach that talent and do it quickly and have a really good candidate experience. And it's a myth. You know, I've heard people say to me, oh, yeah, we have a really long candidate experience because we only want the best people that are going to be bothered to go all the way through to apply. If you're really good talent, I would probably say that if you have a long, overcomplicated process that's not very well joined up, that actually doesn't seem to know much about you in the first place, you're not going to actually fulfill that um, application. You're going to stop and that best talent is going to go somewhere else because it has the choice too. And I think that's something where people should really think about the balance of what they can do through a humor rhythm contact and through an algorithm contact because there's so much that's going to be automated, but maybe the difference will be the best hires will be the ones that can put the human touch into it. And there are many ways you can do that. And some of those are even automated, but they seem like they have a human touch on them. I think, you know, great examples in shopping, great examples in gaming, you know, travel, hospitality. These are the industries that are leading the experience. HR can catch up really quickly. Uh, and when you look at some of the companies that do it best, for example, they actually sit in those areas. You know, there's a world of difference between someone like uh, DocuSign's candidate experience and other companies because they, they, they get it. They, they, that's how they work. That's what they do. And um, I think we'll see a big shift towards this in the next two or three years. Tell us more about which companies, and I use this word on purpose, are trying to get it right. And what are they doing that sets them apart from their competition when it comes to hiring? Uh, yeah, I mean, okay, let's 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 take a let's take a really obvious example. Somebody just had a very successful uh, float on the stock exchange, Airbnb. Okay, you look at what they you know what they've done, right? So they've they've looked at that and they said, okay, let's change. The whole thing. Let's use storyboards and we'll visualize each step of the candidate journey, right? So we look at that and we think about because that's how they approach the people on their site promoting their properties, right? It's all visualized, it's all there. And if you think about they put those frames in there, if you like, as they go through those storyboards, they put the frames of what it's like to work there. It's, it's got to be something, you know, meaningful, not just holistic pictures, but it just hits that empathy with the candidates. And I think it means that they can have the candidates, you know, really much more tapped into what the culture and branding of Airbnb is. And therefore, they're getting people already who are choosing to join or not join based on that early touch experience. So I think that's that's one company that's doing it and has done it really well. I love that visual storytelling, by the way. It is because it's so reflective their, of their brand, right? But I mean, it's, you know, it's one of the, as you said in the, in your, when you introduced me, I've got over 25 years experience of, of working. You know, I started out in newspaper classifieds. Job ads still look like newspaper classified ads in the main, right? It's just loads and loads of boring text with some bullet points in it most of the time. Technology's evolved in the last 25 years, but something else I've always, I, I've referenced before, you know, so booking.com, I think they're you know, really candidate focused. They, they, they do it in quite a fun way. There's loads of interactive, you know, experience experience and uh, on, on their website you know there, there's videos to watch there's, you, know, you can watch different teams you might want to join who your prospective teammates are there's days in the life they go through like meetings as well about how decisions are made oh they've got everything sort of you know infographics blog posts um, but it also just you know has really useful stuff in there like common candidate questions tips on how to do well in their interviews and, and you know it also stores information you know did you find the right role not now are you still open to working with us in the future right so great stuff in there and I think they they do it really well. And then finally, that the one the other one I'd say is probably Slack. They've made a, a really great way of looking at diversity and inclusion, which is really uh, important right now uh, and is going to be really, really important for the rest of the time. And I think, you know, they, they looked at it and so they looked at, you know, the wording they put into descriptions, being more inclusive, you know, build relationships, care deeply. They got rid of, you know, whiteboard interviews, which, you know, can be stressful for people and replace them with blind co you know, code reviews. And that, that's a lot fairer and easier for a lot of people to do that. And they also made it, you know, the option to perform uh, the assessments uh, on site. And that's often easier for people who care for family members at home, you know, so that they, they don't have to go anywhere. They can do it in their own site. So I think, you know, people like that are getting it 
right and they're looking at how they're utilizing a mix of technology but also just good common sense practice of not having it too long being very focused on what the candidate would want to find out instead of just a list of have you got these skills do you meet do you meet these criteria don't you think you know it, 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 it's changed right the, the world of decision making has changed with technology and i think hr hiring has been slow to catch up on that let's talk about the financial repercussions what is the price of getting it wrong, right? Or or right. I mean, you just named some that are getting it right. Obviously, they're doing pretty well on the stock market, right? What about those who are falling behind and failing on this? Well, I think, you know, the price of getting it right is having having the best staff. And I think it's the most important thing of any business, right, is hiring the, the right people and the best people. So anything you do that puts a hurdle in front of that is going to cost you. You know, I, I worked with a, a great boss many years ago, and um, we were going through a hiring boom. And he said, you know, everybody that we interview here, I want them to all to leave with the view that this is the job they want, regardless of whether we thought they were the right person or not, because that's the, you know, that's the attitude we want to put out into the market. And we, um, you know, we worked very hard at doing that. And I think that's still the same now, you know, it's the fact that, you run the risk of losing candidates who will jump at other, other opportunities if your onboarding, you know, if your interview application onboarding process is overly complicated or it doesn't have a great candidate experience. So that that's going to cost you. But also, you know, it's going to it's the reputational damage. It, it always sits in the space that it's not that people just won't want to work with you or don't like working for you or it's not seen as a great place to, to go and work. It's that how much does it damage the brand that you might be pushing different products with? Be, be you a retailer, be you a whatever your industry is, it's going to have an impact on you you know if you take the right measures and you want to you know you want to make that process better faster and you can do that at a time now because of what's happening in this market and then it should be done right now you're going to improve the time to fill you're going to improve the candidate and, and employee engagement and probably your retention rate and if you look at that that's a key key thing in this war for talent now because yes we're going through a time where there's a huge amount of job seeking but it will turn and there are already industries where the scarcity of resources is scary if you look at the uk then there's still hiring shortages in it and engineering for example but there are other many other industries where you know we've got short uh, short skills uh, healthcare is another example but in all those areas they've got to have one thing in common and that's not to overcomplicate the process use the technology wisely use human innovation with it get that data and have somebody really analyze it one of the things hr department should be doing is getting data analysis into their remit and even if they have to go and borrow it from the, the tech department or whatever because i don't think right now enough is being done to really analyze where those best candidates come from what's their onboarding like what does that mean in terms of their retention development later on there's just too much still focus on where did i get this initial candidate did i even get them to interview and it kind of stops there and we need a much more transparent pipeline all the way through to hiring and, and length of time staying with people. If you see what's happening in, in the market, you know, there's, there's been a shift from just posting jobs onto job boards, for example, for four weeks or six weeks to now a lot more money has been spent on cost per click, CPC advertising, and now it's moving to cost per application. And I think that's going to be a shift. That's huge cost for application. Did you hear that out there in the work trends community? That's huge. But it should be cost per completed application, cost per accepted application. That's what it should be next. And then it might be cost per interview. And then it might be cost per hire. And then it might be cost for successful hire. Then it might be cost for great candidates gone through, right? But if the plumbing isn't there to see that data all the way through, that's never going to happen. The reason it's, you know, let's be honest, the reason it's CPC and, you know, cost per click right now is the majority and not cost per application is because nobody trusts each other with the right data, right? Because of the disconnect between the job post in the ATS. No one can be certain how many applications they got really. Uh, and until that starts to open up, different thing from candidate experience, but it will drive the candidate experience because organizations that have the best candidate experience will get the lower cost per application. So actually that hard metric will start to drive candidate experience in the next couple of years. So, you know, don't continue to waste money on 10 year advertising on job boards. Don't continue to waste money on cost per click. Have a look at who's offering cost per application and really start to drive your metrics with them because they'll really care. They'll really care that their experience is best. Uh, and I think that's one thing that's, that's coming really fast. Well stated. John Salt, you took out your crystal ball ahead of time, which I love about you. Keep moving forward and keep up the great work. Thank you very much. Uh, and it's my pleasure to have joined you. Thank you. Thank you. 
If you enjoy listening to the Work Trends podcast, do me a favor, share it with your friends, your loved ones, you name it, so they can stay current on what's happening in the world of work. And be sure to listen to our next podcast when I'm going to be speaking to another interesting Work Trends guest. Catch up with you next time, friends. Thanks for listening to Work Trends from Talent Culture. Join us every Wednesday at 1.30 p.m. Eastern for a live Twitter chat with our podcast guest. To learn more about guests featured on today's show, visit the show notes for this episode at talentculture.com and help us spread the word. Subscribe to Work Trends wherever you listen to podcasts. Leave us a rating, review, and iTunes. Share Work Trends with your coworkers, your friends. Look forward to it. See you next time.